नमस्कार उत्तराखंड साइंस एजुकेशन रिसर्च सेंटर में आप सभी का स्वागत है यूसर्क राज्य में प्रौद्योगिकी आधारित विज्ञान शिक्षा सुलभ करवाने हेतु कृत संकल्प है आज के इस तकनीकी युग में शिक्षा पद्धति में सम्यक बदलाव की आवश्यकता को ध्यान में रखते हुए शिक्षा के सभी स्तरों तक आईसीटी के समावेश से और विशेषज्ञों के माध्यम से विकसित ई कंटेंट सुदूर छात्रों एवं अध्यापकों हेतु उपलब्ध करवाया जा रहा है हमारा विश्वास है कि ई कंटेंट एक मूल्यवान संसाधन के रूप में आपके चिंतन कौशल एवं रचनात्मकता में वृद्धि करने में सहायक होगा धन्यवाद आप सभी को मेरा नमस्कार यूसर्क के इस साइंस स्टूडियो में मैं आप सभी लोगों का स्वागत करती हूं। आज हमारे लेक्चर सीरीज के क्रम में आज हमारे मध्य में डॉक्टर दीपक खोलिया जो कि ग्राफिकरा यूनिवर्सिटी में एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर हैं डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एनवायरनमेंट साइंस में हम उनका यहाँ पर हमारे स्टूडियो में हार्दिक स्वागत करते हैं और डॉक्टर दीपक कोलिया जी जो हमें आज बताने वाले हैं इन्वायरमेंट इम्पैक्ट असेसमेंट पे वो उस पर आज अपना यहाँ पे व्याख्यान हमें देंगे इन, जैसा कि आप सभी जानते हैं इन्वायरमेंट इम्पैक्ट असेसमेंट एक बहुत ही इम्पॉर्टेंट सब्जेक्ट है और किसी भी क्षेत्र में या किसी भी एरिया में जब भी हम विकास से संबंधित कोई परियोजनाएं चालू करते हैं चाहे हमें कोई डैम बनाना है चाहे हमें सड़क का कंस्ट्रक्शन करना है या हमें कोई बड़ी बड़ी फैक्ट्रीज निर्मित करनी है तो उसमें हमें वहाँ के पर्यावरण को कोई नुकसान ना पहुँचे तो उसके लिए इन्वायरमेंट इम्पैक्ट असेसमेंट किया जाता है तो उसमें क्या क्या किया जाता है और उसकी क्या इम्पोर्टेंस है और हमारे विद्यार्थियों के लिए आगे भविष्य में क्या संभावनाएँ हैं उस उस सभी से संबंधित डॉक्टर खोलिया जी यहाँ पे आपको बताने वाले हैं और जो कि आप सभी के लिए बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण होगा तो सर मैं आपका पुनः हमारे स्टूडियो में आपका स्वागत करती हूँ और आपने हमारे लिए अमूल्य समय दिया उसके लिए मैं आपका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद करती हूँ धन्यवाद आप सभी का स्वागत है आज जो प्रमुख विषय है वो है इन्वायरमेंटल इम्पैक्ट असेसमेंट क्वेश्चन ये आता है कि आज के डेट में ये एक हॉट टॉपिक क्यों बना हुआ है और आने वाले समय के लिए ये इसकी क्या संभावनाएं हैं तो जैसे कि ई जो फुल फॉर्म है इन्वायरमेंटल इम्पैक्ट असेसमेंट तो किसी भी चीज़ में जो प्रभाव पड़ते हैं वो दोनों तरीके से पड़ते हैं जो हमारे पॉजिटिव इम्पैक्ट्स और नेगेटिव इम्पैक्ट्स होते हैं आज जितने भी विकास कार्य हो रहे हैं उनमें सभी जगह हम कहीं ना कहीं डेवलपमेंट के नाम पे डिस्ट्रक्शंस करते जा रहे हैं चाहे वो आपका ट्रांसपोर्टेशन सेक्टर को इंक्रीज करना है या हमारे कोई भी पब्लिक फैसिलिटीज़ लाइक हमें रिवर वैली प्रोजेक्ट्स में डैम्स बनाने हैं कहीं मिनरल रिसोर्सेज का एक्सट्रक्शन करना है एयरपोर्ट फैसिलिटी को हमने बढ़ाना है या फिर पब्लिक को जो हमारी उसकी हाउसिंग की डिमांड्स हैं इंडस्ट्रीज की डिमांड्स हैं उसके लिए हमें मोर अर्बनाइजेशन और इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन प्रोसेस को आगे बढ़ाना है तो कहीं ना कहीं हम आज अपने नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज को ख़त्म कर रहे हैं जनरली अगर हम नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज पे देखें तो फॉरेस्ट एज अ रिसोर्स फूड एज अ रिसोर्स मिनरल एज अ रिसोर्स एनर्जी एज अ रिसोर्स एंड वाटर एंड लैंड एज अ रिसोर्सेज की हम बात करते हैं और आज इन सभी विकास कार्यों का इन हमारे जो नेचर के रिसोर्सेज हैं जिनसे हमें डायरेक्ट और इनडायरेक्ट दोनों प्रकार के बेनिफिट्स मिलते आ रहे हैं और जिससे लाइफ इस धरती पर सस्टेन है वो आज एक अलार्मिंग रेट पर पहुंच चुके हैं जिसके दुष्प्रभाव हम लोग क्लाइमेट चेंज ग्लोबल वार्मिंग इंक्रीज इन सी ओ इसके अलावा ओजोन लेयर डिप्रिशन और लॉस ऑफ बायोडाइवर्सिटी के रूप में सामने आ रहे हैं अभी जितनी भी महामारियां आज के डेट में फैल रही हैं उसके पीछे कहीं ना कहीं हमारे मानव का ही अपना दुष्परिणाम है कि हम विकास की गति को जिस अंधाधुंध रफ्तार से आगे बढ़ा रहे हैं उसके दुष्प्रभाव मनुष्य को अपने जीवन में और इसी समय अब देखने को मिल रहे हैं तो इसी टॉपिक को हम आगे जो है एज अ कोर्स सिलेबस के रूप में आज पढ़ने और पढ़ाने की ज़रूरत है धन्यवाद वेलकम टू द टॉपिक ऑफ इन्वायरमेंटल इम्पैक्ट असेसमेंट तो ए 
it is its short form its general meaning is that it is a process through which an environmental impacts either they are positive or negative for a project development activities are being evaluated so while taking any developmental activities what are the impacts of having it upon the environment and what it is related to the socio economic environment cultural environment and what are its impacts upon human health are generally being considered and the essential steps which are being followed in the environmental impact assessment are mainly the prediction of anticipated change in an environmental descriptor second is determination of the magnitude or scale of the particular change and third is application of an important or significant factor to the change so generally we can say that these are the main steps which are being considered while having any environmental impact assessment of any projects there are generally two categories of environmental impact statements which are made previously before having the noc you can say that non objection certificate for starting any project activities so generally the two categories are first a draft statement is made and then the final statements are being considered so if we see the final statement it should have been at least 30 days period initially which should be submitted before construction or starting of any project so if we see what are the major developmental projects that require environmental impact assessment so these are the generally a list of types of projects and their example number one if we, i say land use and transformation if we want to change any land use pattern either we have to convert it into urban area industrial agriculture airport transportation transmission lines offshore structures means that previously it may be a forest area or it may be a agricultural land and now we have to change its use so what are will be the impacts what will be the positive impacts and what will be the negative impacts if we change any land use pattern we have to study it second is resource extraction there are various resources which exist in nature which we call natural resources and when we extract them for the benefits of humans so as example drilling of crude oil mining for mineral resources doing the blasting lumbering clearing the forest for wood purposes and commercial fishing activity and hunting of wildlife these are generally we can say if we disturb them what will be the impacts third is resource renewal if we have to renew the resource previously it was a forest again we have to make it a green belt and convert into a green forest area so we will go for a forestation reforestation one mahotsav so program etc so generally reforestation is done for creating any new green belt for management of wildlife and conservation of biodiversity and for fertilization process and for waste recycling and flood control if we apply some new modern technologies methods what will be its positive and negative side we have to first measure it fourth if we see the agriculture process in which we are doing the precision farming we are doing the ranching dairying feed lot are raising for increasing the grasslands and irrigation if we go for heavy irrigation or the flood method or extraction of water through our underground water resources which is causing depletion in the underground water table is it having a impact on nearby area so we have to see that over extraction of water is it for agriculture or any other industrial purposes is having a negative impacts or not then same fifth one for industrial process as example there are various industries iron and ore industry petrochemical industry pulp and paper plants so everywhere which is requiring water or other resources also we have to see after whatever the leachates or waste are being discharged what are its impact in nearby area then same if we have to increase the transportation facility like railway aircraft automobile sector in which trucks shipping and pipelines 
for supply of natural gases, crude oil are being constructed. So, we have to see what are the positive or negative impacts through if we increase them in a particular area. Then we see the seventh point of energy as it is a basic need. So, what can be of creating dams, extracting of crude oil, then refining and transmission of the various products from a refinery industry and we see that coal and nuclear power stations where we are generating the electricity, what are its negative and positive impacts. Then eighth, it is generally related to the topic of waste disposal and treatment. So, as we see that every industry and from every home area, there is some generation of waste. So, what we are doing of that waste, either we are treating it or dumping it or throwing it out somewhere. So, if we are throwing it in some open land piece or any water body, what will be its impacts? So, what the waste is being damaging to our surrounding environment, we have to see it. Either we can make it some byproduct, we have to treat it before disposal. So, in this area before dumping any waste of any industry, either it is a liquid or solid waste in ocean or either we are doing or going for the landfill method, what are the environmental contaminants and the toxic substances which are being released or which are harming our air, water and land in that particular area or we are doing it underground storage or some biological emissions are being emitting out through that waste. If it is harming the air, water and land or the peoples or nearby forest vegetation or wildlife, certainly we have to apply some remedial scientific methods of the waste treatment. Same for ninth topic if you see the chemical treatment is being required for the hazardous waste, biochemical waste or medical waste especially. And now we see that we are using heavy amounts of toxins in agriculture, right? We are using pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, rodenticides, fungicides which are all poisons for killing our pathogens. So, what are its further effects upon soil, upon water? or other insects or beneficial microorganisms, microorganisms and macroorganisms both. So, that is why we are going for the less harmful chemicals or we can say we are choosing the other methods for treating with the pathogens. Same for creating more recreational activities, either we are creating or declaring any forest to or converting into a reserve forest to a biosphere reserve, national park, sanctuaries or any other area for public benefits. So, in that either hunting is going on which we can say elect hunting or poaching which causes a damage to the, our wildlife. That is why we were having the various projects like project tiger, project elephant, project rhino, project crocodile, project alligator. Why? Because their number were declining due to the elect hunting or poaching activities. So, all we have to see that in those recreational area, what are the transport facilities, food accommodation and entertainment facilities if we are creating for more recreation. So, what will be its impact? So, generally if we say that most impact analysis method which are adopted, they are being divided into following seven types by which we can assess the impacts of any EIA, environmental impacts. So, first method is known as ad hoc method, second is checklist method, third is matrices, fourth is overlay, fifth is network, sixth is quantitative or index method and last is there are various models, prediction models are being developed or fuzzy logics are being made or even now there are softwares by which we can see the activity which is having its impacts in coming future. So, this topic of the environmental impact assessment, what is its practical utility and how it is benefiting the students and the candidates and why it has become a world hot topic now because it is being required now for any activities for if we are going for any development. So, this topic is also important for the various competition examination like for IES, PCH and UPSC other 
perspectives and as a student you should read on the following links also and these topics that what is environmental impact assessment, what is the history of EIA and what is the process of EIA, current EIA reports for the various projects either they are mega projects or minor mini projects in any country and how to read EIA. So if I say that what is the environmental impact assessment, so generally it is a process of evaluating the likely environmental impacts of a project or developmental activities which is being proposed and taking into account into its impacts related to what it is either upon the socio-cultural environment or human health impacts are being generally considered. Both its beneficial and adverse impacts are being summarized. So if we can say that it is a tool which is used to assess the positive and negative environmental, economic and social impacts of any project activities and it is used to predict the environmental impacts before pre-planning stage itself so that decision can be taken to reduce or minimize the adverse impacts through that project which is being proposed. So if we see the evaluation and history of EIA, it generally started from 1970s or 1969 in the USA and brought its first National Environmental Policy Act in 1969 and it was initially practiced by only developed nations but slowly it was also introduced in other developing nations like in Asia, India and other countries were the initial stage they started this to be implemented and in foreign countries if we see Colombia, Philippines were the earliest example of developing nations who introduced EIA in their national policies. In Colombia it was brought in 1974 and in Philippines in 1978. So worldwide EIA is now practiced in more than 100 countries and in mid 90s and we, there were 110 countries and now there are around 120 more countries which has been joined in this EIA project. So in 1989 it was also being adopted in World Bank all the funding which is done for the various projects in various countries. So environmental impact assessment if we summarize it, it was started in 1970 in USA and then in 1970-80 the guidelines become more formalized and developing nations also started using EIA in various projects and in mid 80s and 19 it was introduced in Asia and rapidly growth and training was provided in this sector. So main objective of EIA is to achieve sustainable development with minimum environmental degradation and prevention of long term environmental adverse effect. So what are the main objectives if we summarize them, number one it is identifying, predicting and evaluating economic, environmental and social impacts of developmental activities, number two providing information on the environmental consequences for decision making and number three promoting environment friendly and suitable development by identifying appropriate alternative and mitigation measures has to be taken. So, there is a process which is being followed in the environmental impact assessment. So what are those process? Number one it is screening, second it is scoping, third is assessment and evaluation of impacts and development of alternatives and then EIA report which is also called an environmental impact assessment is being prepared. Then decision making committee is being constituted to see its implementation and finally its monitoring, compliances, enforcement and environmental auditing is done to pass the projects or to stop it. So in the detail you can see which process is required and its details in brief. So importance of EIA, it is a considered as a good tool for caring environment management now and it is a government policy which has been implemented that any industrial project in India also has to first secure EIA clearance or you can say to get the NOC from Ministry of Environment and Forest Department before granting approval for any project itself. 
So current scenario if we see that it came into notification in 2020 as a draft and it has been made now in a open public and it has been also published in official gadget now. So here if we see few important agencies which are concerning about the EIA notification after 2020 should also ha have the accreditation from the various organizations which generally do the assessment and then provide their report. If we see the various government agencies which is being constituted that is Central Pollution Control Board and State Pollution Control Board who gives clearance and then certificate of various green buildings for construction purposes, corporate environment responsibility should be followed and eco sensitive area and or eco sensitive zone has been declared. So in India it mainly started in first project activity after 1976-77 in the river valley projects first time for construction of large hydropower dams and in 1982 the ministry of environment and forest and climate change set up the environmental information system to collect, store and revive the information which is related to environment sector. And after the constitution of NGT, National Green Tribunal, it is being becoming more powerful. And the chief purpose of the environmental statement is to integrate all country efforts to collect, store, disseminate and use environment information for better managing the environmental assessment activities. So if you want to learn more about the environmental impact assessment, you should also have the readings of the various topics or notes which are main beneficial for the UPSC exams. So there is a list of international environmental convention and protocols as example Stockholm conference, Montreal protocol, Earth summit which is say the same statement. Then you can see the environmental questions of the past backyard papers which are related for the UPSC mains general studies. Topic wise questions for UPSC main and pre both are important and environmental notes are being benefiting as a subject experts to know more about this environmental impact assessment. So other related articles which can help in this understanding of the EIA process are climate change in India or in whole world. You can see the tiger conservation projects in India, same for the elephant project, crocodile project and then what are the forest right and environmental laws in India which are issued in various news now and in the past study you can see the Bhopal gas tragedy which took place upon the 2nd December 1984 midnight which caused a drastic influence that any industries should have the responsibility of the people also and how the safety measures can be implemented if any these types of chemicals toxic gases release or get blast due to some disaster. So there are various multiple types of questions which come generally in various competition exams related to EIA. So as example you can have to choose any one correct answer and you will see that more all the answers are similar to each other. So correct answer should be given before making any final objective type questions choice. And first read all the points and then provide your answer. So there are also various links which you, the students can get benefited while preparing for the various competition exams and various posts which are being sanctioned through UPSC especially for ISPCS or the civil services. So you must see that what are the various salary packages upon this and what is the general knowledge which is being asked from the current scenario and the world is going on and then you can see related to the environment the mines and mineral development regulation amendment bill which was passed in 2015 then united nations convention 
on the laws of the sea that what are the restricted areas, what are eco exclusive economic zones and what are the restricted areas where fishing or mineral resource extraction is being banned now. You can see the rat hole mining which is generally done in our eastern states and there are various casualties which has been occur and become a highlight in the news also. So what are the concerns and challenges of doing that? How we can go for the scientific mining methods before extraction of any mineral resources keeping in our mind the benefit and the safety for the workers, mine workers especially. Then we can see that before extraction of any mineral resources, what is the importance types of resources and how they are being extracted without damaging the marine biodiversity. Same there are various exclusive economic zones, what is its basic definition and explanation and why these zones has been made. There are various notes which are available for carrier prospects of NCRT related to geography also, major minerals and their characterizations. And what is the availability and if we go for illegal mining activities or over extraction of any resources, what will be its impact? So we can see the various explorations, policy, licensing and details on requirement and their advantages and disadvantages of any activities. So generally what are those questions which are being asked and you should know that what is EIA? When did EIA start in India? Who is responsible for EIA in India? What are the main aims of EIA? Is EIA only for developing countries or for all? So other related links which can be benefiting for the environmental impact assessment study are you can see the various list of the five year plans which are being generally made for our benefits of the projects or for boosting our economy. So list of Yojana generally after 2020 issue of the environment has been become a more concern. You may be aware that which topics are being generally considered. Then we can go for the various national and international protocols, conferences which are related to environment like Kyoto Protocol, Montreal Protocol, Earth Summit, these all which are having in a past and the climate change policy which we are coming and the all countries are uniting together to reduce the impacts upon the environment and reduce the carbon emission. That is a biggest threat for our environment. There is national solar mission going on in which we have to go for the clean energy that we have to be dependent upon more renewable resources than the non-renewable resources. So there is national mineral exploration policy now which is being predicted and national action plan on climate change has been made for whole countries and United Nations framework convention on climate change has been adopted and various countries have joined hands to reduce the problem of climate change and global warming. There is a Paris agreement which you should know and what are the coal mines status in India, how coal is being considered as a corrupt mineral now and what are its drawbacks because still maximum thermal power stations through which we are getting the electricity are being run by coal energy. So there are various legislations which are passed in Rajya Sabha, Lok Sabha also and the big picture of the commercial mining of a coal and you can be hearing that why the coal scam has been came out in India also in which our former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh was also being blamed but nobody knows that what are its negative impacts if we continue the mining of a coal and use of coal in thermal power plants or various other sectors and what will be their environmental impacts we have to see it. So that's all.